Venus, Mercury, Mars, Jupiter and Saturn have aligned and appear in a line visible to the naked eye for the first time since 2005. And researchers say they believe a ninth planet, about 10 times the mass of Earth, may be hanging about beyond Neptune. Director of the Wits University Planetarium, Dr. Claire Flanagan, joins us now to share her knowledge of both phenomena. Claire, thank you so much for coming Hi, in to thanks. talk to us. Sorry, I'm not at the Let planetarium. Me, oh, aren't you? No. Well, I apologize I'm for that. Uh, if, I mean, we're looking at the kind of evidence that, that's come to light so far. How is it possible that we could have missed a planet 10 times the size of Earth in our own solar They haven't actually seen it yet, so it still has to be found, so it's still a theory, but um, what, they have, what they have found is evidence of the a possible effect of a ninth planet on some of the new things that they've been just in the last few years finding on the edge of the solar system. So we've got thousands of things in the solar system. We've got eight planets, got a couple of dwarf planets. Then we've got thousands of things like, hundreds of thousands of things like asteroids, tiny things. And the ones they've just been discovering near the edge in the last few years, what they've just spotted is they seem to be, some of them seem to be lined up a little bit. So the question is what's lining them up? And one possible answer, which looks like um, they seem to think it's a good explanation, is maybe there's a, a, a ninth planet out there that's kind of channeling and moving those. So what they'll be doing now is trying to look for this, or that will be very far away, and trying to see, trying to find more things on the edge of the solar system to see if everything's channeled or see if this theory holds up. So it's a bit of a long shot. Hasn't nothing's been discovered yet, but people are. Uh, getting excited so about there, it. There is a strong suspicion. Mm. Uh, it's, it's difficult for, for someone like me to imagine exactly how you go about looking for a planet of that nature. Yeah. Uh, are, are you telling us that you look for clues around it that would suggest its existence? You kind of look for evidence. I mean, if you walk in here and there's a mess on the desk, do you think somebody's been in here, all the wind was blowing, something happened? You might not have been here or you might not have seen it on the cameras or anything, but you know something happened. Mm. So you can all see evidence of things. The next thing is like, okay, is somebody coming in here every night, I'm going to watch for them and see if, I, see if my explanation of why the place is a mess holds out. So yeah, that's how things, that's actually how um, Uranus and Neptune were discovered. Um, not from somebody, um, or Neptune in particular, not from somebody spotting Neptune, but from somebody saying, we think there's something out there because it's affecting the other planets. And from the way it's affecting them, from the gravity, we think we know where to look for Neptune. And that's how they found Neptune. So this is a similar thing, although it's um, a lot more complex um, gravitational effects. It, it needs um, thing, the things that are being affected have only been discovered in the last few years. And the um, prediction that kind of um, running and working out how the gravitational effects work is a lot more complicated. So it's only been um, possible in the last few years. But it's, it sounds like a very exciting it's juncture really cool. to be at. Yeah. So, so let's talk about uh, the other interesting thing happening yeah. fairly soon, uh, the planets lining up. What in layman's terms is so special about that? Um, those are, okay, that's kind of the other end of the scale. Those are the planets that were never discovered because we've always been able to see them. So Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter and Saturn. Um, and they go round and round the Sun and <clears throat> sometimes because we, the, it's spinning, sometimes they're on that side, sometimes they're on the other side. And every now and again, like once every few years, it's, you get lucky, you can go out one evening, or in this case it's in the morning, and look across the sky and you'll see all five of them are in the early morning sky. So <clears throat> that happens every few years. Um, if you want to go look for them, the Astronomy Society um, will be putting maps on their web page because next, next week's the time to go looking for those. Already you can see Venus. The, Venus is the morning star. Okay, this is the kind of thing you want to be up early in the morning for. How okay. early? Um, just before it starts getting light. Okay, so not too early, else you'll miss Mercury, and not after it get light, gets light or you won't see anything because the sky is too light. So there's kind of like about an hour before this, quarter, three quarters of an hour before the sun comes up is a good time. Right, but already you can see the morning star, that's Venus. In about a week or so, it looks like a very bright star. Okay, in about a week or so, if you go out at the right time, you'll notice that there's a, a one a, a, quite a bit fainter below it, that's Mercury. Mercury kind of pops up into the sky and goes, down again after a couple of weeks. So that's one we're waiting for. When Mercury comes in, we've got all five of them. Already, if you're looking at Venus over that side, when the sun comes up, Jupiter's the very bright one on the other side. And <clears throat> if, you watch the, if you watch the moon next week, um, the moon will go from Jupiter, it'll go past Mars and then past, and past Saturn. So you'll be able to spot those as well. Mars and Saturn are kind of, but 
um, look more like ordinary stars, so you need to know which they are, but they're all like uh, Mercury, Venus, uh, I think Saturn's next, then Mars, and then Jupiter, that side. That's all in one go. So you can like knock off your whole like, you know, grade nine syllabus <laughs> in three minutes in the morning. <laughs> That's great. Before you go to school. So. A lot of students will, will take you up on that. I hope so. No, They're very cool. So much. It is very exciting indeed. Thank you so much for cool. sharing that with us. So next week is the week to do that, to make sure you set your alarm, get out of bed early just before sunrise and try to spot that amazing alignment. Dr. Claire Flanagan uh, talking to us about uh, exactly what to expect next week and the possibility that there could be another planet out there we didn't know about before.